All right, so we're about to start. I hope you guys can hear me okay. Jessica G, Social Town Network, 979 The Box. And uh, we're here at the South Post Oak Smoke Shop, like holy moly donut shop. So uh, <laughs> it's 420, so you definitely want to come in here and get your supplies. Um, and there's lots of prizes, so come on through. Uh, Blanca's cooking, uh, so there's everybody with food. But uh, what we're all excited about is talking to a little being uh, from the inside. So he's actually on the phone right now uh, to answer questions. Uh, so we're going to try to do a little mini interview. So I hope you enjoy it, okay? So uh, we're going to get right to it. We have being on the line. Say what's up. What's up, man? What's up, man? Hey! Oh, oh, that truck is just ruining. Oh. <laughs> All right, well, we gotta wait for this truck to pass because you know we are outside. Oh, extra. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that, but you know how we do it, H Town. All right. <laughs> All right, so I don't know if you can hear him, okay? Hey, you already know Jessica has no limits, baby. No filter. No filter. Right, no go. filter. All right, so uh, can you hear me okay, Bing? All right, look, I'm fine. What's up? Hey. Hey, Bing, how are you? Happy birthday. Ah! All right, man. What's up in there for your boy? Right here, tell them we got a big boss one, golden. Oh, yeah, we, we got one. We got one uh, lit for you. Um, but thank you for uh, calling in and thank you for uh, taking time to talk to your fans and everybody who's shown so much love on the Hustle Town Network Facebook um, over your classic uh, house party freestyle. Uh, there is a new project out, and we'll be talking about that in just a few minutes. But uh, we do have some questions that have already been asking, and uh, so we want to ask you where were you when you recorded that house party freestyle? Um, I was at the Shut Em Down studio in Denver Harbor with, uh, with Filero and uh, my cousin Ike Man. And uh, we decided to just put something together just to get a little crafty. Actually, Big Flake was already on there and they, they showed it to me. And I liked it. And I just, you know, we put some stuff together. I got on there and did my thing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you sure did. I uh, still. Years later, we're still getting a big response off of that uh, freestyle, the house party. Over six, seven thousand shares and just thousands and thousands of comments. And uh, so, uh, what, speaking of Shut Em Down Records, what was it like back then as a Latino, a Mexicano, trying to get on and have your own label like Shut Em Down Records? What was it like during that time in that era? Oh, man. When we first came out, it was a lot of. It was a lot of beef going on back then, man, between different neighborhoods, you know, because ultimately that was in Denver Harbor, and I was from Southeast, so it was kind of like, you felt a little awkward, but then, you know, everybody started showing each other love, and I think we just, we knocked down a few doors, man, and now, you know, you know everybody's affiliated with each other, and we started doing our thing. Um, we, we got it, we got a... We got cool with Dope House, you know, they started putting us on tour with them. And then, you know, we, we just made we made a, an identity for ourselves, just, just dropping out some dope music, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and it looked like a lot of fun. So tell me what it was like back in the days and what it was like with the support and the shows. Oh, man, it was, it was fun, you know. The, I, I, I used to take pride just going out there and just having fun, you know going on stage, just being on stage. And and for me, it, it was a blessing because my homeboy Graham used to put me on stage with him way back before I even started rapping. So I got that experience before I even became a rapper. And then when I started rapping, it, it, it was cool. But I used to get on stage twice. Like I used to open up with Shut Them Down. And then when Dope House came on stage, I had songs with them too, so they called me up on stage with them too while they were headlining. So I was get I was getting a lot of air time, man. It was a blessing. That's great. And so, you know, back then there wasn't a lot of uh, Latinos to look up to, and so you've been a big, big influence on a lot of artists now. Uh, you've opened up a lot of doors. You were part of that uh, era that uh, you know kind of started everything. So, with that being said, who were the artists that? Influenced I 
Well, you know, with a lot of people that looked up to you as the doors that you open, uh, people that look up to you and idolize you, who are the people that you idolized when you were coming up? Oh, man, the people I was uh, my homeboy, him, from my hood. So, you know, I used to always ride with them. So I was inspired by him. And then, you know, I'm... I'm all grown, so I was inspired by nothing but Houston music, like Starface, Street Military, you know, uh, South Park Coalition with Blanks and the K Renos and all that stuff. I was inspired by all that type of music, man. And then, you know, the, the Spoon Up Click came in and all that, all that type of music right there just inspired me, you know what I'm saying? That's it. When you look at me as a rapper, you look at all that right there, all of that. So speaking of the people that you looked up to, like Grim, uh, you do have a song with um, SPM and Grim called Mafioso. So we had uh, Two Charms ask the question, um, how did that happen? How did you make that happen with, with having a feature with Grim and SPM on this song? Oh, man. Uh, actually, you got to give them the, that quick where that song goes to uh, Filetto and X-Ray. DJ, DJ X-Ray and Finero are the ones who, who put that together and, and uh, actually X-Ray put the, the star face, you know, the cuts from the movie on there. He did all that and they had the track together and I just, I just jumped on it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They, just, they had a spot, they had a spot for me and I jumped on there and did my thing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, um, who do you idolize now? Is there anybody now that you feel like, you know what? Um, I have a lot of respect for them in the industry. Oh, man. Zero, man. I have a lot of respect for Zero, man. The king of the ghetto, man. <laughs> I love his music. Yeah, I love his music, man. So that's, that's it, it, it touches me a lot because I went through a lot of the similar things and he speaks a lot of the real shit, you know yeah, what I'm saying? definitely, definitely. Has been doing it for years. Um, and I think that's why a lot of people like your music and have followed you for so many years. It's because of that similarity. Uh, you were influenced by some really great artists here locally. So, you know, with that being said, when you're spitting the real and uh, you're able to, people are able to relate to your lyrics. I think that's why you're still getting the responses that you do on Facebook and online and social media today because of that. So uh, we do have a lot of people that are showing up right now. If anybody has any questions, uh, you can feel free to ask them. But right now we're going to get into your new project. So talk to us about this new project, Blessing and Curses. Well, it's like a mixture of, you know, like a crossover that I've been doing. You know, I've been getting a lot of, I've been getting more close to the God, you know, praying more, trying to get more righteous. And, uh, and the curses just come from like the past, you know, a lot of, a lot of times I've you know, shot myself in the foot, just making dumb mistakes in life. Yeah. So it's kind of like the mix, it's kind of like the mixture of both, you know, when you see me kind of playing with the microphone, you know, you'll see me back in my old hood form, and then you'll see the transformation of me. Antonio Lopez is asking. All right, so how do you make these uh, records? I mean, a lot of people don't know, or maybe that's just asking too much, but how do you make uh, nah. records happen while you're inside? <laughs> nah, it's what, I mean, what it is, you know, it's, it's just record, kind of like the way you, you got it hooked up now. Already, Jay, I appreciate that, baby. It's the, it's, the, it's the same kind of thing where they, they just, they set up a little device at the house and it records through the phone and then I'll hear the track and then, you know, sometimes I got a time to where I, I can hear the track, like sometimes I'll be able to record over the track and it kind of records like maybe like a half a second or a second late and all they got to do is just shift my, shift my vocals to the side and line it up and that's basically how they do it. All right, so, you know, you're known as being a rapper, but how about your writing? I mean, are you continuing? Obviously, you just put a new project out, so you are writing, but are there things that you write other than, than just rap? Yeah, I mean, I... I mean, I, since I've been locked up, I've, I've written poems, I've written uh, screenplays, I've had a lot of ideas, you know what I'm saying? I, I do my thing. Lisa Moya says they need to do a 2018 version of Mafioso. All right, so we just had a question. Um, and what was, your name? what was her name? Is he planning to do a... 2018 version of Mafioso. Okay, so they're they're asking for a 2018 version of Mafioso. 
Oh, can, can that happen? Oh, can it be I can do that. I mean, that, 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 that sounds like a good idea. I never thought of that thing. So you just bring that up, you know, I'm yeah. open for everything. Yeah, that was already pre time Appreciate that. I'm, I'm going to definitely put something down. Maybe Shout I'll, out to everybody maybe watching, man. That's what's up. Get somebody on there with me. Right, so, so you're not opposed to doing any type of... Uh, Features. So if there's an artist right now and they're like, you know what, I want to get Lil Bing on a track, can they make that happen? I'm down with everybody, man. I don't got no threat. Okay, so Roly, Roly, Roly right, wants so we to have know. Question. Lucy. Yes. Uh, what makes his music different from every other Latino rapper out there? Okay, so in your opinion, what makes your music different than any other Latino rapper out there? Oh, uh, man. I guess. I guess because I lived it and I've been through certain things and it's, and it's no secret, you know what I'm saying, about my life and my hardships. So when I speak it, it's like when people hear it, it's like they know it's not fake, you know, they know it's real and that emotion kind of touched them. And how important do you think that that is uh, versus somebody who's creative? that makes up stories versus somebody who's actually lived it. Um, is there a difference and should it be 100% real versus creativity? Yeah, um, I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of like, it's the raw emotion behind it. Like when you look at Tupac and you listen to his music and you know what he went through as far as getting shot and going to jail and, and having a beat, it just, it just does something to you where you're like, man, that's, that's that real, that's that real music right there, you know what I'm saying? You just, you just can't, you just can't put a price on that, you know what I'm saying? Okay, Antonio Lopez wants to know, right, we got who, another question. Who is Bean's favorite up and coming rapper? Okay, right so now. we've asked, uh, Latin rapper at that. Latin rapper, okay. So they're asking, uh, who now uh, is your favorite that you've heard of, of an up and coming Latino artist out there? Up and coming Latino artist? Um, I've heard of uh, the DC Garden guy, man. I, I like, I like his style. Wow. Right. Shout out to DC Garden. I cut, I cut for the dough, man. And I, I hope that we're here to collaborate on some good music together. Yeah, I like them. That's what's up. All right, so let me ask you this. What, what is, how many tracks are on this new album, on this new uh, project? How many tracks? There's 10 tracks on them. And which out of those is your favorite? Um, uh, one more time. Respect my thing. Respect my thing. All right. Okay. Well, now respect, that he yeah, says respect that. Respect my pain. Respect, respect my, my pain. pain. Yeah. Respect my pain. Okay, gotcha. Okay, Jimmy we have another Villalo question. says, "I love his music now. I'm a changed man." Free little bean. Okay. So we have people that are saluting you on uh, your new project that they like that you've made that transformation and that you're. Um, you know, your content's different because you're, you're a whole different person now. Uh, so you're getting props on that because uh, they can certainly relate to that too. Yeah. So. Juanillo Hernandez says what his feature, what are his features going for? Oh, okay. So now they're asking, they want to put you to work, man. So <laughs> <laughs> how much are you charging for a feature? The features are going for, uh... I've been doing them for like four, five hundred a feature, just depending on, you know, on what they want. Like if they want a hook with it, or if they just want a, a sixteen, or if they want four bars, or eight, it just it varies different prices. Okay, yeah, okay. So yeah, it varies different prices, but it starts about four hundred dollars. Okay. And uh, who would they reach out to? JJ. JJ and uh, she can yeah, get a hold of his producer. They can reach out to JJ or they can reach out to my producer if they want to produce this album for me. That was your best. Okay. All right. Okay. Jesse Jr. Aleman wants to know would he do a track with Lil Flip? All right. So would you do a track with Lil Flip? Would I do a track with Lil Flip? Yeah, I do a flip track with Lil Flip, man. I, I grew up on the flip. Right before I got locked up, I was actually on all the uh, the mixtapes that he was doing before he uh, blew up. Okay, okay. Miguel Moreno wants to know, what does he think about these new wannabe rappers with <laughs> rainbow color hair? I want to know from a real G. Okay, okay. So, um, I don't know if you've heard of uh, Takashi 69 but uh, 
He's a Mexicano, so he's uh, doing rap music right now all over Billboard. But he's got rainbow hair, um, tats all over his face, kind of looking a little weird. I don't know if you've had a look at him yet, but uh, uh, they want to know what you feel like uh, when you see these types of artists and what are your, what is your opinion on that? Oh, uh, man, my opinion is... To each his own. I'm glad I never did that to my face. <laughs> um, uh, I don't. I think you should at least make yourself presentable. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I don't. I don't believe people should just. You, you guys want to participate? Y'all like, have any questions, Taz? Little so B. Maybe you can put a couple of tacks on there. Then you know, if you got the. Uh, if you got some good artwork, if you're gonna get some tax on your face, make sure you got a real good artist, because a lot of these people are doing it and they're getting some trash work on their face. <laughs> and I guess that can make sense of all messed up. Yeah. And but you know, let me ask you this, you think it should matter what someone looks like or does it matter about how they speak and what they're talking about? Um I mean, if you're, if you're spending some good stuff and you're selling and you're making a lot of money, I mean, it doesn't matter, you know what I'm saying? But if you're just chasing, you're not selling no albums and, and you don't got nothing to fall back on, well, what are you doing? I mean, what else are you going to do, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Well, you definitely got a lot of support out here. JJ's out here, the boys are out here. Uh, we've got um, two charms and we have a lot of fans that are here uh, that have asked a bunch of questions. Um, but. Somebody's saying saludos Another desde question. Guanajuato, Mexico. Oh, so we got That's Mexico fine. watching. We got Mexico watching, so they're shouting you out. Um, we say Los Linos says, was you cool with most hated? Ow. Okay, so they're asking uh, if you're cool with most hated. Yeah, yeah, I'm cool with most hated. Cool. All right, baby. Um, it's a blessing just, just to be me, you know what I'm saying, without having all this drama and looking over my shoulder or, or, or you know, getting on the internet, talking back and forth to people, man, I, I ain't got no time for none of that, I don't entertain none of that energy. So tell me how much you've changed um, over the years, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we'll call that. Sorry, that was all folks, we didn't Y'all keep them coming, man, y'all keep them coming. He will be calling one last time, you guys, if you have one more question. All right, and he's back. Can you hear us? Thank you, Tex. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right, so um, before, you know, we got rudely interrupted. Um, no, just kidding. Um, I'd ask a question. How have you evolved? How have you changed? Obviously, everybody grows, um, you know, getting older. But in your circumstances, in your situation, how has your mentality changed the most? Uh, my mentality changed the most when I just started setting more goals for myself and uh, wanting to be wanting to be better all around, you know, instead of just, you know, looking at one area of my life, I started looking at all areas of my life as far as like my health, um, my spirit and my music, the way I am towards people, being more respectful, being more humble to situations. I just I just wanted to follow myself all around. And I, I guess I guess I can I can credit being locked up and going through certain things kind of having an effect on me. And it, it, it was, it's either it's like a make or break situation, you know, you can come inside here and you can you can get lost and you can let the situation get the best of you or you can look at it from an optimistic standpoint and get the best and get the best of it, you know what I'm saying? It's better than men to get the best of you, you get the best of it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So what keeps you going every day? What keeps me going is knowing that I'm going to get out one of these days and knowing that I'm blessed with a lot of support, knowing that I got a lot of love, uh, okay. knowing that... Uh, Knowing that I got some dreams that I'm going to accomplish when I get out as far as like getting into the music and uh, trying to scout new talent. And knowing that I got a lot of people out there that are doing big things and they're in the industry out there like Baby Bass, my boy Lucky, uh, Kathy Perez. You know, these are guys I grew up with. You know, we were, we were sleeping in studios and trying to make something happen, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. Now... I, I, growing up, 
uh, I'm from San Antonio orig originally. So I, I grew up listening to a lot of, you know, freestyle, H-Town, you know, artists, you know, um, Lone Star Riders, of course, SPM, stuff like that, you guys. So when I got here, I felt like a lot of that culture was missing and it was gone. So I decided to create Hustle Town Network to give us that, that sense of pride again. Um, to be Latinos, well, I mean, just because we're Latinos, we don't just listen to Mexican music, we listen to hip hop. Uh, we're influenced by, you know, the culture here as far as H-Town. So that's why I want to showcase the Latinos. I was asked the question why I decided to, to shine a light on Latinos knowing that I work for 97.9 The Box. Um, and that's why, because I want us to have that pride again, to be out there that we're talented, we can do the same thing as anybody else. Um, so for you to be one of those pioneers, it's an honor to talk to you today. So I feel really, really proud about doing that. Um, you have a lot of knowledge. You've been through a lot. Uh, you, you pretty much was, were, was in the beginning of everything. What is your advice right now to all of these up and coming Latino Mexicano artists that are trying to make it still? What is the best advice that you can give them to try to make sure that they get on? And the best thing I can tell you, be yourself. And I always remember that being a Latino, you already know we are our biggest supporters. No matter where you go, a Latino is going to support you just because you're a Latino. You know what I'm saying? You just got to be there. And uh, that's, that's one thing that I love about my culture. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We always got that love and we always got to support each other. Just like you said, you came down here and you put your hustle down network together and you got it going on, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's just that nerve, that's just, that's just how we breathe, you know what I mean? That's what's up. So with this new project you have out, it's available on iTunes. So right now I'm showing them the actual CD cover, the album cover. Uh, there's 10 tracks. Any features on this one um, that we haven't talked about? Any features on this new project that we haven't talked about yet? Um, yeah, uh, I got Rashi on the uh, on my mind. You know, that's my own boy. You know, long time built my affiliation. You know, Shout out Rashi, Shida Gonzalez, baby. 21st century. <laughs> All right, it's available on iTunes. Uh, Hugo gonna... Ramos wants to oh, know if you could go back into the past, what would you tell yourself? Or what would you do different? Okay, so we got asked the question, if you could go back to your younger self, what would you tell yourself? What what pieces of advice would you give yourself? I would tell myself that I got a bad gift of talent and that uh, I need to take this series right now and just dedicate it with this rap music and really put my heart into it and stop doing everything else and focus on that. So if there's one thing that you can do when you get out, what would it be? Like the first thing that you could do in the music, as far as music goes, what would it be? Um, I would, I would executive produce as far as like put me up, put me a little Copy team together. Kind of uh, like, kind of like Dolby and, 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 and Sugar Slam from Cash Money. I would be kind of like a behind the scenes orchestrating and just getting some new talent and just schooling, man. Even if I'm dope writing for them or whatever, man, I just want to, I just want to put on, man, and, and bring the team, bring the team to the ring, man, and get us a championship, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Don Froze wants to know how did the song Lately come about? How did the song Lately come about? Lately came about, actually, I got the beat and uh, I didn't know what to do with it. I pondered with it for a while, but it was, you know, the, the, the beat was, it was in my head for a while, you know, we played with it for a little bit and then it just, that mel the melody just hit me and I just, I just, it just came out. It, there really wasn't nothing there I wrote. It just came out, just played me. I don't even think I wrote that. I just, it just came out. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, I didn't even have no verse for it. I just, I just dropped the hook and then everybody else jumped on it. You know what I'm saying? That's what's up. So okay. uh, Candyman says what's up. Man, that's my boy. What's up, man? Already, he said what's up. So uh, Candyman's going to be uh, representing for the North 
and he's got a new show that's coming out. It's called Straight Talk, Straight from the Streets. I can't remember the name. Please what correct is it? me. Uh, if, you're, if you're on there, what is it? Yeah, please correct me. But uh, he's going to be repping for the North Side. Um, the Hustle Town Network yeah. is growing is, so much that we can't be everywhere. So we definitely need help. Uh, with representing the Latino culture, uh, Mexican rap. So, uh, so yeah, Frank's going to definitely handle that. Um, I keep wanting to Frank. Okay, how him. does he see the Latin movement since he started to now? How okay. has it changed? All right, new question. How has the Latin movement changed from then to now? Oh, man, it's changed because uh, I guess people got different influences. You know, you know, music influences a lot of people. And I guess the styles kind of changed. You know, back then, it was the Switcher House and the SUCs, and, you know, everybody was, was on that type of vibe. And then things kind of changed. So now you got the futures, you got the rumble flows, and, and you, got the, you got the different styles. So I think that's how it's changed from what I hear on the radio now. Right, right. So, uh, oh, the correction, it's called Straight From The City, what uh, Candyman's working on. So he'll have artists and interviews just the way Hustle Town Network does and we'll be actually cross promoting. That way it's unity. That way everybody who's got a show, everybody who's got a platform, as long as it's for the movement, we're all gonna be united together. So I'm I really hey, hope you know you know uh, a lot of people don't know man back when back when we was first coming up as rappers uh there wasn't a lot there wasn't a lot of Latinos with a thrill back then and I remember me and Candyman being the being one of the first two Latinos with clears in our mouth long before you even started seeing that. So uh, we were doing our way up, man. Right? Back when it was still a taboo. <laughs> All right, Sluggerino yeah. Satoshi says, Bing's next album, Barrio Gorillas, and let them know about the mini movie you're working on. Okay. Oh, so let yeah. me find I out mean, somebody knows right, something right? we don't. Right, so I mean, I heard you talking about screenplays and writing stuff like that, but uh, somebody's talking about a new mini movie that you're making or in the works? Yes, yes, I'm actually, I'm actually kinda, I'm trying to craft one together so it's gonna talk about, you know, the Latino neighborhoods and how we're all, we're all tied and how our families are all tied in. Cause you know, all my family are from Second Ward. And then, you know, I got people in Magnolia and I know people in DH, you know, and, and the South things and it's just, you know, these are predominant Latino cultures right there. We're all together, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Talk about that. Ramos, if you can redo it all over again, what would you do differently? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, okay. So I think he answered that. Yeah. 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 Alright, next question. Uh... Okay, Miguel Moreno says, man, I would be thrilled if you was out and flatline was alive. Oh yeah. So y'all can go hard on the mic. Alright, yeah. be flatline. So uh it was a um just a, a, a prop and I guess just saying, hey, you know, if you were out, um, it'd be dope to have uh, you and Flatline on the track, so I definitely... Oh, man. Yeah, definitely. All right, team. All right, team, man. How does Bean feel all about right the Rockets? Right. Are we going to win the championship or what? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so they're asking about the Rockets. If you think they're going to win the championship this year. What's up? With the Rockets, if you think they're going to win the championship this year. Oh man, we gotta put on, man. We got to, man. I've been, I've been on, I've been on every game. I'm right there. I'm on the TV, putting on. I'm throwing up my H's. Every time, every time Green hits a three pointer, I'm throwing my H's up with it. Man. <laughs> 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 All right. Any other yeah, questions? Man. Um, that's it for now. Okay. Um, Candyman says flatline love beam. Yeah. He said uh, flatline love beam. Right. So, Lincoln right, Tech right. says, shout out for everybody from Bing, please. They want a shout out. They want a shout everybody. out from you. If you can please give everybody a shout out. Hey, shout out to everybody out there, man. Good night, man. It's my love, man. It's my love from Lil Bing, man. I love y'all, man. I appreciate y'all supporting my music. I appreciate y'all supporting everything I do. Look out for the new project, man. I'm, I'm going to be putting on, man. Hey, man, just because they got me locked up. They don't got my mind, you know? Hey. The Hustle Town Network. Oh, no. Follow the Hustle Town Network on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.